here what have they asked the value of square root of 8 minus 6 iota and they have given us four options now guys to find the square root of a complex number i'm very sure that you remember the formula which we use can you recall what was the formula which was taught to you well if i have to get square root of let us say my complex number a minus b iota that is equal to plus minus root over half again root over a square plus b square plus a minus iota times again root over half then root over a square plus b square minus a whenever your b is greater than zero right so we are going to directly apply this formula substitute the values of a and b and let's find quickly the answer so when you put the values you know here that a is equal to 8 and b is equal to 6 so on substituting the values let's quickly find what do we get so it's going to become root over 8 minus 6 iota is equal to plus minus square root over half and then you will get root over 8 square plus 6 square plus 8 and then you will get one more term that is minus iota root over half again it will become root over 8 square plus 6 square minus 8 right and now you know 8 square plus 6 square is basically 100 square root of that is 10 so when we substitute the value it's going to become plus minus root over half and 10 plus 8 is actually going to become 18 minus at a times root over here you will get half multiplied by 10 minus 8 that will be 2 right so when you solve this out it's going to become plus minus 18 by 2 is 9 and square root of that is 3 minus the next term is going to become iota and this will be the final answer so we have just used the formula for square root of a complex number substituted the values and got the answer clear okay and if we look at the options we can say that answer will be c understood guys well moving on in this question they have said that if x plus iota y whole raised to 5 is equal to p plus iota q then what is the value of twice of y plus iota x whole raised to 5 divided by q plus iota p they have given us options also here so how should i get this well what i have to think here is that from x plus iota y can i get a term like y plus iota x or a term similar like this well yes we can do that let's see how so what they have said is that x plus iota y whole raised to 5 is equal to p plus iota q now guys listen very carefully what am i going to do here is I have to generate a term like y plus iota x. For that, I am going to take iota common from left hand side. So when I take iota common, I am going to get iota raised to 5 and this is going to become y plus x by iota. Right? Whole raised to 5 and this is equal to p plus iota q. Now what am I doing? I am also taking iota common from my right hand side. So when I take iota common from my right hand side, it's going to become iota multiplied by q plus p by iota. Clear? Yeah. Okay. Now one more thing. We know that iota square value is minus 1. Right. That means I can say that my iota value will be equal to minus 1 by iota. Right. Or if I multiply this by minus sign, I can also say that my minus iota value will be equal to 1 by iota. So that means what am I going to do here? It's iota raised to 5 multiplied by y minus x iota whole raised to 5. Again is equal to iota multiplied by q minus p iota. Is this much clear? Okay. Now what is this iota raised to 5 guys? How can I find this value? Well we know that iota raised to 4 is equal to 1. Right? That means I can say that my iota raised to 5 value will be equal to iota. That's correct. So this value is equal to iota. So that means iota raised to 5 and iota both from left and right hand side are getting cancelled out. Clear? So I now have y minus x iota whole raised to 5 is equal to q minus p iota. But 
in the question what they have asked well they have asked y plus iota x whole raised to 5 that means it's conjugate of y minus iota x clear so if i take conjugate on both sides let's see what do we get it's going to become conjugate of y minus iota x whole raised to 5 is equal to conjugate of q minus p iota now how can i find conjugate of left hand side so the property says that my conjugate that means the z bar part whole raised to n is equal to z raised to n whole bar right so that means y minus iota x whole raised to 5 whole conjugate is going to become conjugate of y minus iota x whole raised to 5 this property i'm using here while on the right hand side you already know that conjugate of q minus iota p is nothing but q plus iota p clear okay now quickly just write what is the value of y plus sorry y minus iota x whole conjugate well that value is y plus iota x whole raised to 5 and this is equal to q plus iota p that means what they have asked in question twice of y plus iota x whole raised to 5 divided by q plus iota p right and we know that since numerator part that is y plus iota x whole raised to 5 and denominator q plus iota p are equal they'll get cancelled out and the final answer which is left with us is 2 clear what we have done we have just taken iota common from both left hand side and right hand side and then just taken the conjugate is this understood guys perfect and if we look at the options we can say that answer will be b Understood, guys? Very well. Well, moving on, let's see what they have said here. If z is equal to x plus iota y, where x and y are real numbers, and z minus iota z and z plus iota z is represented on the organ plane. You know the organ plane, right? In place of x axis you have you have the real axis and in place of y axis you have the imaginary axis so all these three points are actually represented on the argon plane so that we they form a triangle we have to find area of this triangle and the answer has to come definitely in terms of x and y well they have given us four options here so how am i going to do that well since I have to get the area of triangle, I'll first try to find the vertices. Yes, the endpoints or let us say the vertices of the triangle. So my first point is actually given to me. Yes, they have given the first point that is Z. That means my one vertex will be X comma Y. Right? Then what they have said? Another vertex is minus iota z. Now, minus iota z means minus iota times of x plus iota y. And when you multiply this, it's going to become minus iota square y minus iota x. Now, guys, you already know the value of iota square. Well, that is minus 1. That means my second vertex is going to come out as y comma minus x. Clear? Coming to the third vertex, the third vertex is z plus iota z. So, when I actually substitute the value of z over here, it's going to become x plus iota y plus iota times of x plus iota y. And that is going to become x plus iota y plus iota x minus y, right? My iota square value will be equal to minus 1. That means I can say that my third vertex will be x minus y comma x plus y. So now I have all the three vertices with me and I have to find area of this triangle. Clear? Now comes the question guys that if I have all the three vertices, can I get area of triangle? Well, yes, we have already read that in straight lines. That's correct. Can you recall what was the formula if all the vertices were given? Well, the value of delta was half mod of, there was a determinant which was x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3 and back to x1, y1. So, now, well, now we'll just substitute the values of all the vertices and quickly find the answer, guys. 
solve along with me. So my area value will be half. Then I'll have modulus of this determinant. I'm putting the values. It's x, y. Then it's y minus x, x minus y, x plus y. And back to my x1, y1, that is x, y. And now we have to just expand this, right? So when we expand, it's going to become half of modulus. And it's going to come minus x square minus y square plus x y plus y square plus x square minus x y plus x y minus y square minus x square minus x y. This whole mod is going to come. And actually, when we look at the terms which we have written over here, we can say that xy part is getting cancelled out and 1x square is getting cancelled out as well as 1y square is also getting cancelled out, right? That means what am I left with? Well, I'm left only with my y square and x square with the negative sign and when I take the mod, I'll get the area, right? So my area value finally is going to come as x square plus y square whole divided by 2. This will be the area. We have just used the area of triangle formed by three vertices. Clear, guys? Perfect. And if we look at the options over here, we can say that answer will be C. I hope you have understood. Right? Very well. Well, moving further, what they have said here is, you have to find the number of complex numbers Z which are satisfying the relations. First relation is, mod of z minus 3 minus eta is equal to modulus of z minus 9 minus eta. And another relation is that modulus of z minus 3 plus 3 eta is equal to 3. Now to get the complex number z, I can say one thing here that I have to substitute my z as x plus eta y in both the relations and solve for x and y, right? And guys, let me remind you one more thing. Can you just tell me what is the modulus of A plus eta B? Well, the modulus of A plus eta B is equal to A square plus B square. And as well as modulus of A minus eta B is again equal to the same value. I hope you remember this. Right? Well, this will be used very shortly in this question. So what we are going to do, we are going to substitute the value of z as x plus eta y. So when I put in the first relation, let's say, I'm going to get x plus eta y minus 3 minus eta whole mod is equal to x plus eta y minus 9 minus eta. Right? So if I collect real and imaginary part, I'm going to get mod of x minus 3 plus eta times of y minus 1 is equal to modulus of x minus 9 plus eta times of y minus 1, right? So the final relation will be this. Clear? Okay. So we have got till this relation and now what we have to do? Well, we have to solve for x and y and for that I have just told you that modulus of any complex number, let us say a plus eta b is equal to root over a square plus b square. So when I put the value over here, I'm going to get the first term as x minus 3 whole square plus y minus 1 whole square. While on the right hand side, I'll have x minus 9 whole square plus y minus 1 whole square, square root on both sides. And when I do the squaring, I'll get this. Now, well, now I have to just expand this part. So when I expand, I'm going to get x squared plus 9 minus 6x plus y. See, y minus 1 whole square is actually getting cancelled out. Right. So I'll have only the term of x which is left on the left hand side as well as on the right hand side. It's x squared plus 81 minus 18x. Right. So from here, I can say that 12x will be equal to 72. That means value of x has come out to be 6. So my complex number z now can be written as 6 plus eta y. Clear? Now I have to get the value of y only. And once I get the values of y, I can say that how many complex numbers will be the solution for this equation. Clear? Okay. 
So we have the second equation with us z minus 3 plus 3 r the whole modulus is equal to 3 and z we have got it is equal to 6 plus r the y. So let's substitute this in the equation of modulus. So it's going to be 6 plus r the y minus 3 plus 3 r the is equal to 3. That means I'll get 3 plus r the times of y plus 3 whole modulus is equal to 3. And you know the property a plus r the b modulus is root over a square plus b square. So it's going to be 9 root over 9 plus y plus 3 whole square is equal to 3, right? And 3, right? And when I do the squaring, I'm going to get 9 plus y plus 3 whole square is equal to 9. That means I'll have y plus 3 whole square is equal to 0, which is going to give me only one value of y. The value of y will come out as minus 3. That means I can say that the final solution for the system of equations, my z, came out as 6 minus 3 iota. So I'll have only one solution and if I look at the options, I can say answer will be A. Is this clear guys? Understood? Well, I hope you're enjoying learning. Coming to the next question, what they have said, alpha and beta are two different complex numbers with modulus of beta is equal to 1. We have to find the value of modulus beta minus alpha divided by 1 minus alpha bar beta. Options are given to us. Is it 0, 1, half or 2? Okay, how are we going to do this? Well, guys, I'll tell you this question in just two lines. Yes, the solution is only two lines. But for that, first you have to tell me what is the relation between beta, beta bar, that means the conjugate of beta and its modulus. Well, we have only one relation that is mod of beta square is equal to beta into beta bar and that value is equal to 1, right? So, I have this relation with me. How am I going to use this in this question? Let's see. So, this question actually asks the value of modulus of beta minus alpha divided by 1 minus alpha bar beta. Now, I'm going to substitute this value of 1 as beta beta bar. Right? When I do that, it is going to be beta minus alpha divided by beta bar beta minus alpha bar beta. Whole modulus. Is this clear? Okay. So, from here you can see very clearly that in denominator, my beta is going to come out common. So, I'll have 1 by modulus of beta multiplied by beta minus alpha upon beta bar minus alpha bar whole modulus. Now guys quickly when you look at this can you tell me what is the relation between modulus of beta minus alpha and modulus of beta bar minus alpha bar. Well if I take my z as beta minus alpha, I can say that my z bar will be nothing but beta bar minus alpha bar. That means this entire expression has come out equal to 1 by modulus of beta. Well, that value is 1 and it's going to become modulus of z by z bar. And this we know very well that z and z bar, they'll have the same modulus. So, the final answer will be equal to 1. This will be the final answer for this question. Understood, guys? Very well. And if we look at the options, we can say that B will be the right choice.